Nazi dictator. Adolf Hitler's all-out attack on Poland makes the long-dreaded European war a certainty. World War II began with the German invasion of Poland in 1939. By 1940, German forces were terrorizing Europe. In a matter of months, the Nazi offensive swept through Denmark, Norway, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. Standing between the Axis powers and their plans for global domination were ordinary Americans called upon to make extraordinary sacrifices. It is to honor each of them that this sacred place was created. In July 1942, seven months after entering the war, the United States joined the British in the strategic bombing campaign, attacking vital German infrastructure and cities from above. James and Edward Norton, twin brothers from Conway, South Carolina, took to the skies in the same plane as pilot and co-pilot on May 17, 1943. Their aim was to bomb the gas works in Nazi-occupied Harlem in the Netherlands. These missions to degrade the German war machine were critical and dangerous. The range limitations of fighter escorts left bombers vulnerable to targets heavily defended by anti-aircraft guns, radar, and the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe. Anti-aircraft fire brought the Norden's plane down into the cold North Sea. The body of 2nd Lieutenant James Norton came ashore in German-occupied Dutch territory and was temporarily buried in a Dutch civilian cemetery. His twin, 2nd Lieutenant Edward Norton, was never recovered. They were 22. A year later, the tide of the war was turning, and on June 6, 1944, D-Day, Allied troops made the long-awaited invasion of Western Europe, landing in force along the Normandy coast. American, British, Canadian, and other Allied soldiers overcame withering fire on the landing beaches, breaching the Nazis' Atlantic Wall. After bloody fighting in the hedgerows of Normandy, the Allies broke out of the beachhead in mid-July and advanced rapidly across France. Hitler's forces were in retreat but following the liberation of Maastricht, the Allies reached the end of their supply line. Private First Class John Rigopoulos had been among the first paratroopers to land behind enemy lines on D-Day. Now, his company was called upon to take part in another assault that would put the Germans on their heels. Hoping to outflank the Siegfried Line, 390 miles of bunkers, fortifications, and tank traps that defended the German border, the Allies focused on a narrow front in the Netherlands. Operation Market Garden was a bold airborne and ground attack to seize nine key bridges and secure a route into northern Germany. But the plan proved too ambitious. On September 20th, 1944, Rigopolis was part of a unit that had just crossed the river wall in fragile canvas boats. As they moved along a railroad embankment, the men came under enemy fire. Hit in the chest, 
Regopolis fell facing the enemy. He was 23. The work of caring for the American dead fell to the U.S. Army Graves Registration Service. In the fall of 1944, near the town of Margraten, a small village of 1,500 people, the Graves Registration Service converted a fruit tree orchard into the U.S. Military Cemetery Margraten, which would later become the Netherlands American Cemetery. As American soldiers prepared to invade Germany, this quiet farmland would soon be transformed. By November 1944, after fierce fighting, the Allies had finally broken through the Siegfried Line. For the first time, German soldiers were forced to fight in their fatherland. Sergeant Morel Stenet, assigned to the 2nd Ranger Battalion, fought to keep German reinforcements at bay in the Hürtgen Forest. On December 7, 1944, Stenet's unit was caught in a brutal onslaught. Despite being wounded, he helped an injured comrade, selflessly insisting, in colorful language, that the other ranger be taken to safety first. By the time help returned, it was too late. Sergeant Stanett was 22. As the bitter winter of 1944 deepened, the Allies continued to fight in the Hürtgen Forest and along the Siegfried Line. A week after Sergeant Stenet's death, they heroically withstood the last-ditch German offensive known as the Battle of the Bulge. And in February, American troops overwhelmed German forces in the Hürtgen Forest. As they retreated, the Germans destroyed the discharge valves of an upriver dam, flooding the Ruhr Valley and delaying the Allied crossing of the Ruhr River until February 23, 1945. Just two weeks later, the Allies crossed the southern Rhine River. The fallen arrived at the Netherlands American Cemetery faster than could be buried, forcing the U.S. Army to appeal to the citizens of Margraten for help. The local population turned out in force, digging enough graves in just two days to lay the casualties to rest. By April 1945, Allied units were advancing into Germany through different regions, fighting their way towards Berlin. Although the outcome of the war was no longer in question, American soldiers continued to pay a heavy price for every mile they advanced. Sergeant William Allen and his men had fought their way through France, Luxembourg, Belgium, and into Germany. On April 19th, Sergeant Allen volunteered to deliver hot food to soldiers who had been fighting that day. On the way back, his vehicle hit a mine. William Allen was 28. For many service members, like Sergeant Allen, the final days of the war in Europe were no less dangerous than the first. Dorothy Jane Burge was a Red Cross worker who, along with her sister Grace, followed the American troops into Germany. On May 1st, she was riding in a captured German plane when the pilot lost control. Dorothy Jane Burge was 29. Her sister wrote to the family back home. She will be buried with the boys with whom she has worked, lived, and loved. My dearest darling, I keep saying to myself, it can't be too long and we'll all be going home. I know it sounds crazy. Dear son, yes, we did you have a good time up at grandma and grandpa's house? I sure would have liked to have been home with you and mommy. But we have to make the Germans quit fighting first. Each attack is harder now. Last summer I really didn't give a damn. 
Now that I've weathered it so well this far, I keep thinking that I might really get back. Do things ever look bright? Berlin nearly surrounded. Almost every army on the Western Front across the Rhine. Pretty soon now and you'll have me clutter. I'll have to say goodnight for now as it is getting dark. I miss you both and love you both very much. Your son, Joe. Until the next letter, I'm saying goodnight. Loving you always. Ed. Take good care of mommy for me. Daddy has to go now, so goodbye. For now. Now this is kind of a novel way to wish you a very good end the best of the dog at all. I think I'll have to uh, get ready to sign off. Don't forget that I love you, my darling, and uh, I'll be home soon to see you. Germany officially surrendered on May 8, 1945. General Eisenhower had promised that no soldier would be buried in enemy soil, and so Americans who had fallen and been temporarily buried in Germany were reinterred to friendly soil in cemeteries like Markgraden. After the war, many of these soldiers' remains were repatriated to cemeteries in the U.S., while other families chose to lay their loved ones to rest in the lands they helped liberate. The American Battle Monuments Commission renders perpetual care for the over 10,000 Americans honored at the Netherlands American Cemetery, ensuring that time will not dim the glory of their deeds. Every name inscribed on the wall of the missing, every name engraved into the thousands of headstones, represents an immeasurable personal sacrifice. But together, these fallen American heroes remind us of our dedication to freedom and the profound strength of unity.